Probably by now, all of you have already heard this word in popular media, such as movies and games. This word. The EMP. The EMP. What is an EMP? Oh, and before I explain, don't forget to share, subscribe, and comment anything down below. Let's get to it. You see, EMP, or what we call transient electromagnetic disturbance, is a brief burst of electromagnetic energy, or at least I took it from Wikipedia. But it is still holds true. You see, electromagnetic pulse alone do not have an effect until they cause an effect. And this effect is what we call an electromagnetic interference. And you all know what interference is. It's a sudden disturbance in any kind of system. And you all at one point in time, you already noticed, for example, if you bring a phone near your, some sort of a speaker with a television on it, it starts to sound like Yeah, that sound exactly. Now, Generally, there are three modes of such electromagnetic interference is caused by. One is through electric field, two is through magnetic field, and three is through both electromagnetic field. Yo, 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 I'm not getting affiliated, okay? Okay, now, first, electric field. Now, electric field, as we all know it, is generated by any electric charge. Okay, this circuit, you may all know it as a Darlington pair. It's a very sensitive circuit that can detect electric field emitted by any kind of object. They usually make it in power core detections. Okay, now I made a learning to pair. I'm gonna try to touch it and show you how sensitive circuitry works. So when I touch it, it creates light. I'm not connected to anything, mind you. You can test electrostatic charges using this Darlington pair or using a MOSFET right here, so you can all try it if you want to. Sensitive equipment, for example, a RAM in CPU. Now, there's always this regulation that you should always ground yourself before touching any kind of microprocessors. This is the reason why, because if you touch it, you will disrupt its own electrical properties. You may erase data, or you may create a corrupted file inside the RAM. But that, that's just computer science. So that is one way electric field can affect our circuitry. The other one is a corona discharge. Let me show you. Okay, you all know what this is. My flyback transformer, which emits a high voltage, about, well, 30,000 volt maximum, I believe. Now, for example, if I bring my phone close to this high voltage generator and that electric field would generate a interference an electric field interference let me show you now here i bring my phone to this terminal now it is on now when i turn it on see that i didn't even touch it i wonder what will happen if i open it in my telegram it's it's opening tabs it's starting to opening tab what is it gonna send now Oh my god, it would have sent a message to somebody that I definitely do not want to send a video to. So yeah, this is in short what electrical interference is. Now let's get to the second factor which is magnetic fields. Now let's just say there are two conductors brought together and one conductor is carrying a very high current through it. The other conductor is carrying none. And to explain this as 5 year old, it means that if you bring a changing magnetic field to a conductor, that conductor will create an opposing magnetic field. Also an opposing current, which means, yep, just like this. Okay, now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna charge this big capacitor and discharge it around this receiver that I made. Couple of wire loops and connect it to the LED. Now I'm gonna shut off the light. Now what I'm gonna do is charge my capacitor. Okay. I think it's charged. I made a one loop only because the high voltage will generate enough magnetic field for me to be detected. And watch. You all saw that? I think there was light inside the LED. Now imagine that sudden collapse of electric field that generate that kind of magnetic field near an equipment. All those microchips and all those sensitive materials, they're all gonna be nada. For example, in this video, a YouTuber placed his iPhone on an induction circuit and he strapped it. His iPhone just starts malfunctioning and giving off very odd colors and even start to popping out and eventually turn white. That's actually funny. Now, this part of the video is gonna be about why it's called a pulse. You see, creating such kind of interference usually takes power and energy. You see, if we try to continuously give it, our energy will be depleted and our circuitry will heat up. There will be a lot of energy loss. Even generator of mine, when I turn it on, there's always heat and very, very big losses. So what we do is, Collecting all those energy and power in a small power voltage supplier, for example. In a working mechanism of flash tubes or flashlights uh, used in photography, you see this component, well, is what I found inside a flashlight device. 
Internally, I plugged out this capacitor inside it. You see this? This is a capacitor. What this circuitry does is continuously charging this capacitor, but periodically. And you all know, for example, this thing works on 3 volt. All that energy is stored in such short period of time as a form of energy. So all that power is inside this and flash. So while saying that, we're going to do a slight modification on the circuitry. You see, I add this capacitor to give a continuous discharge of power. And this one is the spark gap. So we can create the same effect as I did earlier. By the way, this loop can act as an inductor. This is a capacitor and this is spark gap. So by combining this capacitor and inductor, we can successfully create a resonance frequency. And you all know familiar what the formula is. And you all saw what we can do by combining a capacitor to the circuit, we can create a continuous and very destructive surge of magnetic field change. And that will destroy any circuits. That's why I'm not gonna try it on my phone. I don't want my phone to be destroyed. <laughs> Element to it, which is an antenna. And if we do this, we can successfully create a resonance frequency, which thus creates an EM field. And this new form of electromagnetic field, that frequency will be the same as the resonance frequency of the circuit, which I explained it in my earlier video. Go watch. Oh, when you can click on the link and see the video for yourselves. By building this circuit, we can create our own electromagnetic radiation. The circuit that I made on my previous video was 25 kilohertz. Is inside the spectrum of radio frequency. All right, now I've connected the amplifier to the LED. Now we're gonna longer distance than the usual. And electromagnetic field is being created is what interferes inside radios. You see this kind of interference in electromagnetic radiation, especially radio is what causes that d -d 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 sound. And creating such kind of transmitting circuits is uh, illegal and it breaks several rules in FCC radio transmitter without uh, approval from the authorities. So yeah, doing this, keep it low, low power because you don't want to interfere with radio signals you see there are ways that you can protect yourself from such interference one of the ways is usually is isolate two different current carrying conductors that's one two is always to discharge yourself before touching any kind of um, sensitive equipment or circuitries and the third one is an em interference it is using a ferrite bead i think it's correct or a ferrite core you know that thing that you see on laptop chargers yeah that exactly using that and you can virtually be safe from this kind of interference well guys if you like this video always share subscribe and comment anything down below